Hello everybody, this is Tim here uh, once again with my review for my second Ernest film. Ernest Goes to Camp. Just to start off with this film, this is a two and a half star film. It's an alright movie, it's a decent movie. But to be honest, if it wasn't for Jim Varney in this film and his likableness as the character of Ernest, I'd probably give this film two stars and just say it's an okay movie and not really an all right to decent movie. Um, but because of his likability, it just makes the film more enjoyable. If it would have been somebody like Kevin James, I probably would have gave this film like a passable two stars. Because it's Jim Varney, he makes like even the weaker humor in the film work and he's still enjoyable to watch. It was directed by John uh, R. Cherry III, which uh, I believe John Cherry actually directed every single fucking Ernest film. Uh, Jim Varney, once again, Ernest, he's fine. Um, this film is not as good as Dr. Otto. It's not as funny as Dr. Otto. Uh, with the character of Ernest as the main star of the film, uh, the film is actually uh, more childish and more for children, so I graded the film like that. If I would have been a kid watching this, I would fucking love this movie, probably. <laughs> but me watching it now as, you know, a 24-year-old adult, uh, I still like the film, and Jim Varney still has a lot of great charm, and I own the film, and I watch it all the time. I enjoy watching it. And Jim Varney does great in the film, and like I said, it's a two-and-a-half-star film, which is not a bad rating, but it's only like an all-right, you know, rating. Like It's like an all-right movie. Um, but just to jump into the film, well, Jim Varney, he's an iron... Uh, he's a... Well, he's Ernest, yeah, he's obviously Ernest, but he's uh, working at a camp, and he wants to be like a camp counselor, and he's like juvenile delinquent kids get sent there to try to like reform them or something like that or whatever, and fucking it's pretty much a basic story. Like he got these bad guys who want to like destroy the camp so they can like mine the camp. They're like construction workers, and, and pretty much Ernest defeats them and saves the day. That's pretty much the basic plot of the movie. The plot doesn't really, is not really anything thought-provoking or anything, but it's simple and it works. Um, but, uh, you got these guys who want to, like, destroy the camp, and they keep trying to get the, the Indian who owns the land to, like, sell it to him, but he keeps telling them to fuck off. He doesn't want to sell it. Um, so they, uh, eventually get Ernest to get him to sign, because Ernest is the only other person that can speak his language, um, speak the, the chief's language in the film. So, uh... They, they trick Ernest into telling the chief to sign the paper, to sign the land over. They tell him it's like for some kind of like preservation of like, I don't know, some kind of shit or something like that. To trick him into signing it. Like something about like these people are like destroying the water or something. And they get Ernest to get the chief to sign it. And of course Ernest, being the gullible guy he is, doesn't bother to actually read the contract itself. So they, they wanted like, uh, so after that they want to, you know, fucking mow the camp down. And, um. You get, like, Ernest trying to bond with these kids, these juvenile delinquent kids, and the, the kids who play the juvenile delinquents, they do fine. They have, you know, decent charisma. They're all right. They're, they're fine. You got, like, these other two, like, preppy-type kids at the camp who, like, keep trying to fuck with the juvenile delinquent kids, and the preppy-type kids seem like, they're, I guess they're supposed to be, like, best friends, but they seem more like they're dating, to be honest, because of the way they're all, like, they're all the way they're always with each other and everything. But, uh, of course, nobody at the camp likes the juvenile kids except for, well, Ernest. And uh, the weak spots in the film are the really childish comedy, like, fucking, like, when Ernest is, like, gonna, like, uh, he's, like, sharpening the, one of the kids' uh, knives, like, his switchblade, and he, like, cuts his hand, and he's, like, oh, is that a rabbit over there? And he's, like, oh, <laughs> I mean, it's still mildly amusing, but it's so childish, I mean, it just, it doesn't seem like there's any thought put into some of it. Like, uh, Ernest gets hurt. And the, the juvenile delinquent kids, like, fucking wrap him up in this, like, first aid bandage shit and tie the tie it to a bus and then take off with the bus, fucking drive out. And the, he gets, like, spun around in a circle really fast until all the bandages come off of him. Like, little shit like that. It's just, like, really simple humor. There's not anything, you know, invested into these jokes. It's, like, just so childish. There's not, like, much intelligence in them, like the way they're written. But... For every, like, couple weak jokes, you get, like, one really funny Jim Barney scene that just raises the film, like, right back up. Like, there's this funny fucking scene uh, where he's in the woods with the, the juvenile delinquent kids, and he's, like, fucking, 
looking at this family of badgers, and he's telling what the kids, whatever you do, do not look a badger in the eye or something like that, and do this like a bee, a bee, a bee, a bee, a bee, a bee, a bee. <laughs> it's so fucking funny, just the way he does it. Um, it just makes me laugh my ass off because the way his face is, it's just the way it looks. And then later on, he's like telling the kids ghost stories, and he's like telling the story of like the hook man, and he like fucking, uh, he, he's just like starts trying to act it out, and he's like, and then on the <laughs> And then on the fucking like dashboard or something like that or inside of the vehicle was the hook and he's like ah <laughs> like doing sounds like that. Just like he he's got you can tell Jim Varney has like really good comedic talent and good comedic timing. It's just the jokes that are written for the film and the comedy scenes are kinda of so childish a lot of times that they just don't just don't fly together really well. But um it seems like he's better than some of the material he's given here. But uh, the kids they don't they don't warm up to Ernest because they're they think he's like a geek or whatever and uh, he's he really even though he's the only one that gives a shit about him so they like fuck with him all the time and bring him like poles and ivy and shit like that and pretend like it's like a plant uh, I mean well pretend like it's like a, some flowers or something and fucking of course uh, and you get like these really like one thing I love about the Ernest films is like you know, like these really random scenes. Fucking Jim Varney just like spouts out random stuff as the Ernest character. Like he has to get a shot, and uh, he gets a shot, and he's like, "I did it! I took the Lindbergh baby! I am Joseph Mangala!" <laughs> I'm like, "What the fuck was that about?" But it's, it's, it's random, and it makes me laugh. I can't help it. And there's like this other scene where he's like fucking talking to a turtle, and it bites the shit out of his nose, and the kids have to come in there and like sing to it to get it to come off of his nose. And uh, when they first get in there, they're like, "Ernest, man, you got a turtle on your nose," and he's like, "Uh." No, this is it. It comes back every now and then. <laughs> Fucking shit like that, I think is funny. Just like those. It's just if it's by anybody else, maybe it wouldn't be as good. But with Jim Barney saying these lines, they're funny because he just has such likable charisma, and you root for the Ernest character. Um, and then like when fucking there's like this really big construction worker guy who's like the second, I guess, main villain of the film next to the head honcho of everything, and uh. Ernest wants to like straighten everything out and get these, you know, motherfuckers away from the camp so they won't destroy it. And Ernest gets in a fight with the big motherfucker and uh, he like beats the shit out of Ernest, <laughs> which is uh, I don't think you see Ernest do a lot of action in any of these films, but seeing Ernest getting the shit beat out of him is a little depressing because he's, you know, he's Ernest and he's like, you know, so <laughs> so much weaker compared to this guy, but still. So he, Ernest gets the shit beat out of him. Um, and then, of course, the, he finally convinced, the kids finally realize that Ernest is the only one that gives a shit about him, and then when they first find out the camp's getting shut down, Ernest is like, you know, you get like Jim Varney, like, fucking, like, a montage, I mean, you get like a montage of Jim Varney, like, singing a song, and, it, um, talking about how glad he is it's raining, or, it's like a really emotional type song, and it kind of makes me feel a little sad because he's passed away now. Because uh, it kind of makes me think of him passing away, so I I, I like that part, but it was still kind of sad for me. But the kids finally realize that he's the only one that does give a shit about him. Um, so they decide they want to, you know, the kids decide they want to say fuck this shit too and team up with Ernest to save the camp. That's pretty much the plot of the movie. I mean, Ernest trying to save the camp. But once again, the the uh, it's decently entertaining. But once again, the little weak gags like with Ernest is like talking, but uh, he's like talking to the camera saying always safety first or something like that, and he's, like, putting up a sign or, like, working on a sign, and obviously, you know, it's leading up to him, like, getting an accident or something or whatever. I mean, it's so obvious, but, you know, it's not horrible. But, um, but, um, yeah, but Jim Varney, you know, he's, for every, like, weak little comedy childish scene like that, he lifts the film back up because he has just, like, a good, really cool, good vibe about him. And, uh, so they, like, rig up all these bombs and shit, Ernest and the kids do, and they're gonna, like, fucking, uh, and they take these turtles and put them in these, par put up these little parachutes on them, and what's funny is you actually get to hear the turtles talk for a second, and one of the turtles is like, I'm scared, Sarge, another one replies back and goes, we're all scared, son. <laughs> oh, that was funny, and the fucking, like, turtles get flung into the, where the construction workers are, and they, like, bite the shit out of all the construction workers, and all through the movie, there's, like, this, uh, fucking... Uh, like ritual thing that the they keep talking about about where this Indian guy was like tested and he was like had these blades and stuff threw at him and uh, if he was like pure of heart they wouldn't hurt him or something like that or whatever. Uh, they mentioned it like twice in the movie. Um, 
it doesn't really have any logic to it or any kind of sense to it. And at the end of the film, um, when Ernest, when they t after they take out the big construction worker guy, they like rig this vehicle up, make it explode. And he gets out of his uh, bulldozer, and he's like been choked by the smoke. And Ernest like fucking bitch smacks him and knocks him out, <laughs> which is a pretty decent scene. But um, so after you get you get by that um, I mean after you get by that scene, fucking uh, this the the leader of the, the guy who runs everything, the main uh, villain, the construction worker guy, he's gonna he's come there and he's just said fuck this shit, I'm gonna blow Ernest's fucking head off. So he wants to shoot the shit out of Ernest. And then fucking, for some reason he can't shoot Ernest, like the bullets don't shoot Ernest, like they, he can't hit him, it's impossible. Even he's like two inches from him, he still can't hit him. And uh, it like makes no sense whatsoever. We're like just supposed to buy it because it was the ritual thing. It goes along with that of like Ernest being like pure of heart, some kind of mystical, you know, kind of thing. It doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever, and that, that's kind of stupid. That was kind of, that doesn't flow really well. But, um, and then, um... Like the the Indian guy who owns the land, like his granddaughter, like comes back uh, from like where she's been talking to a judge. Is like the judge issued a restraining order just automatically, just like that. And I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, like just the problems like just solved like that. That just seems way too fucking easy. Um, and just like you know, just like snap over the problems done. But whatever. So um, so they issued a restraining order, and then the next scenes like everything's back to normal. And then, of course, they get to keep the camp, the, the, the construction, the guy who runs the construction thing, like, uh, the main guy admitted that, uh, he, he tricked a fucking, you know, Indian chief into signing over the property. So, it's a big, it's a happy ending, you know, the juvenile delinquent kids have, have learned to be better, and they've bonded with Ernest, and he's their friend now, and all that shit, and fucking, and then you get this stupid fucking, uh, retread joke from the beginning of the movie. Like, when Ernest was working on the sign, and you know he's just going to fall again. He's like the same thing over again. He falls again. But, uh, I hated that. But I also, this is, like, the guy who runs the camp. Uh, he kind of makes me laugh, because every time, like, something happens to somebody, he'll walk up and be like, what happened? And then when they tell him after they say it, he's like, well, as long as nobody was hurt. <laughs> as long as nobody was hurt. And he, the way he delivers that line, just so casual, just makes me laugh. So that's what, um helps me raise this film up to a two and a half star film that and Jim Barney is just so fucking enjoyable to watch um so yeah this is an all right film like I said a lot of the ch really childish jokes don't work but Jim Barney sells like when the he sells the more funny moments with just like seeing him and just hanging out with him when he's on screen just the scenes with just him are so funny um but yeah all in all it's a two and a half star film it's an all right film it's a decent film I'd recommend watching it if you're a fan of Ernest or of Jim Barney it's not as good as Dr. Otto, but it's not the same comedy style either. That film was much darker. Um, but yeah, this is an alright movie, and I definitely recommend it. So I'll see you guys again with the next Ernest film. Oh, and before I fucking forget, uh, there was one joke. One that kind of made me, I uh, remember, that made me laugh too. was when, like, Ernest, eat, these two chefs are working at the camp, make him eat, like, this real nasty shit. And he's like, is that a rabbit over there? And he, like, runs out. He runs into the guy who's, like, the head of the camp. And the guy's looking at him, and Ernest's, like, got his mouth full. And he's like... Give like a really casual look, you know, like like everything's normal, and then the guy like walks off and he runs behind like a fucking truck and vomits up vomits up hell. I thought that was funny too, but yeah, Jim Varney makes this movie, and the kids in the film aren't bad, so uh, I I def I recommend this movie. Yeah, it's a two and a half star film. I, I it's an enjoyable film. It's lighthearted, and a lot of the childish comedy doesn't work, but when but for every like really couple weak childish like moments. Jim Varney raises it back up with just a goofy face or anything like that, just because he has so much charisma. Uh, so I'll see you guys again with the next Ernest film.